الله أكبر الله الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصر اللهم على من عادانا اللهم ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مردعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وعنا معهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the most compassionate the most merciful all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he who is guided by the will of Allah no one can misguide him and he who is misguided no one can guide him except Allah سبحانه وتعالى we do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When the gas light lights up, it's red. This is the title of a small, small, quick, short article for an Egyptian uh, person. His name is Ibrahim al faqi And it might not be authentic. It's attributed to him. But this is how it's attributed on the internet. However, Someone said, <laughs> he said in Arabic, حينما تضيء لمبة البنزين الضوء الأحمر When the gas light lights up, it's red. I will read his exact literal words to see what's the relation with Ramadan. Dr. Ibrahim says, I was traveling in my car to an area called Ain al-Sukhna with my family. It was past two o'clock midnight when I noticed the gas line indicator lights 
because the indicator was indicating that the tank was nearly nearing the end. I went to buy some supplies and then set off and forgot about the gas line, the gasoline. It was only a short period before the gasoline indicator lit up, announcing that my fuel would run out completely after a while. So something very normal. Most of us, we face this. It's not a big deal. Most of us, we see this kind of red or orange light. Okay, you know, you know, you have 30 or 40 or 50 miles, depends on your car. So in a few minutes, you will have the fuel and the gas station and it's not a big deal. But try to put yourself now, he's traveling at the midnight, the first time he's taking in a place in the country yard. He continues, I went to buy some supplies and then set off and forgot about the gasoline. I'm repeating, I was only a short period, it was only a short period before the gasoline indicator lit up, announcing that my fuel would run out completely after a while. I wasn't worried at first, thinking that I would find a lot of gas stations on the way. But as time passed, the darkness and the lonely road passed, and anxiety beca began to seep in. I called a friend to inquire about the first gas station. He's in the mid now, midnight. Okay, he's expecting in a few minutes we'll find a gas station. Now, he called a friend and he informed me that it was a very long distance away. And anxiety turned to terror now. All concerns and problems declined. Now, just one concern. <laughs> he has a family, and by the way. Men understand what I'm talking about. When you know that if you are alone, it's not a big deal. <laughs> Simply, you can park to the side of the road and wait someone to come. But once you have your wife, your kids, your daughters with you, in a long distance, midnight, anything could happen. Any car with just two drunk people having a knife, a disaster could happen. And anxiety turned to terror. All concerns and problems declined. All hopes, dreams, and worries were limited to one thing only, the gas station. <laughs> He's talk, describing his inner thinking now. I no longer wish for anything from the world except a gas station. <laughs> Look, see what happens in a few moments, completely, by default, he declined everything he deleted from his concern the priorities everything except gas station that's it i no longer wish for anything from the world except a gas station as all the problems that were occupying me few minutes ago have diminished disappeared nothing left a light appeared to me from afar and the weak hope and suspended joy came to my heart I approached the light, it was not a gas station, but a very poor rest stop. I felt frustrated. I asked the man about the nearest gas station. Look what he said. My whole being was attached to that man's mouth. You know, I was waiting, how many kilometers? <laughs> if he said ah, something that I can't approach, I'm lost. <laughs> he said, I felt the whole being my whole being was attached to that man's mouth. The man said, the station is three kilometers away. <laughs> I almost hugged him, but I feared that his answer was inaccurate or the gas station doesn't have gas tonight. Still, some hope, but not necessarily something to solve definitely the problem. Then I set off and continue on my way, my eyes never leaving the gas indicator light. The seconds passed like an eternity. Finally, I glimpsed the station from afar. When I arrived there, when I, when, I, when I arrived, there was no one there. I started looking for someone to talk to. Mainly in the Arab world, we don't have a self-service for the gas. You have to have someone to help you there. You can't do it by yourself like here. So, that, uh, so he, he has to wait for the owner or someone who's working there, someone in charge. I started looking for someone to talk to. A man finally appeared and I asked him an anxiously, do you have gasoline? 
He said to me, yes. Then he said, it was the most beautiful yes I had ever heard in my life. Because this yes means I'm saved. I prostrated to Allah. He did the sujood immediately on the spot. Then I set off to continue the journey, feeling that a new life was written to me. Here comes now the sight and point. A new life was written to me. Because when you are lost in a desert way, in the midnight with a family, having kids and girls, no one understands what we are talking about unless if you are a man and you are in charge of kids and families, especially females. The only thing that comes to your mind, what if a gangsters came and kidnapped my family? I mean, actually, you will feel the fear of the terror movies multiplied by 1,000. Because what can I do? What can I do if this happened to me? Subhanallah. Now, he did the sujood. Uh, he said, a feeling that a new life was written to me. Doctor Al-Faqi continues, a meaning came to my mind that comes to me every Ramadan. That's why I'm quoting the, this, this story. He said, this thing reminded me with a meaning that comes to my mind every Ramadan, which is Ramadan is basically a gas station. One of us will be provided with it for the rest of the year. So how can we waste it? How do we pass the only gas station and not refuel? It's the only gas station for 11 months. <laughs> so if you lost it, still you have a long, long, long time to have this gas station again. So in case if I lost it, maybe, maybe I will not reach next gas station. God knows. So this is the morale or the morale behind the story. Now, this Ramadan may be, he continues, I'm, I'm quoting, this Ramadan may be the last in the life of one of us, which means that the last stop to refuel before coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't know. I, 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 uh, I said it maybe once here. Once I was giving like the, the special khutbah of the janazah for my aunts, the sister of my mother, may Allah descend his mercy upon both of them, about maybe 15 years ago. So, you know, in the, in the cemetery, the graveyard, I was saying one of the normally classical things, I said, let's do our best to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to return back, you know, any kind of injustice you have done, such and such. You know, I'm, I'm reminding myself and the brother and sister. There was about maybe three or four, five hundred people. So I said, just randomly, I said, we never know, maybe one of us will not return back to his home. Once I finished and reached home, my brother calls me, said one of the people who was next to you, he just passed away now. He was listening to me. SubhanAllah, you never know. You never know, just a few minutes between what I was saying and he passed away on the graveyard. La ilaha illallah. The last station I'm continuing, on, I'm quoting. The last station, he says, is repentance, righteousness, redressing injustices, Honoring one's parents and returning to the Quran. God Almighty says in Surah al dhariyat Fafirru ilallah. So flee to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Firru. As if the one of us in these occasions we need to consider as if everything in this dunya as a monster is about to kill me, to eat me. I need to flee from everything to Allah. Qal Fafirru ilallah. Flee. Escape from, because everything in this dunya is dangerous, by the way. It is danger. At any moment, it contains a fitna. He continues, O oh Allah, make us among those who procure this Ramadan and do not make us foolish, nor the negligent ones. Don't make us ignorant, nor the deprived, O oh Allah. Ameen. By this, he finished his talk. Stop. إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له ولي مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير I want to add you know stories mainly they stuck in the mind the memory especially for the young and the kids they will remember it maybe 10 years maybe your kid who's 
five or six or eight or nine, maybe. We remind you, say, I remember once a sheikh in Masjid al-Dar said a story about the gas light and the gas station and, uh, you know, subhanAllah, this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. We love stories, we are attached to stories, that's why third of the Quran contains stories. So narrate, tell them the stories so that they might reflect upon. I have my own definition, which I always keep repeating and I will keep repeating for the Ramadan, my own definition. I say Ramadan, Dawrat Inqad Ilahiya Ijbariya Sanawiya. It's a divine obligatory rescue course. It's an annual obligatory divine rescue course. <laughs> Which means Allah pushes us, Allah obliged us. He does not give us the choice to say no. No, no, it's not an option. You have. But why, Allah, it's a rescue course. Once a year, 30 days. Why? Risk. Because we need it. By the way, who said that we know, as we say, our maslaha? What is the best for us? Who said? If we are left alone, the normal person of us, even the very clever, we will go behind our desire and look to the world, east, west, north, south now. You have very clever people in Japan. Are they looking for the akhirah? We have big scientists in NASA. In light of Qawlullah Ta'ala, sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusim hatta yatabayyina lahum al haq. We will show them. And Allah did not say we will show you. <laughs> we show them. Sanurihim ayatina fil afaq. In the horizons, our signs. We will show them our signs in the horizons. And in their selves, till it becomes so clear to them that it is the truth. Do you think there's some people more than the people who works in NASA who realizes what does it mean the greatness of the creator on daily basis the numbers that they use the things that they witness and I, I can't I can't imagine a scientist works for example in NASA how come he's an atheist I don't know I don't know and I can't imagine a mathematician anyone who studied mathematics will become an atheist I can't I can't because with the logic of mathematics, it's impossible not to have, I mean, it's impossible to believe in the law of coincidence. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging them. سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْأَفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ Why I'm, saying, I'm explaining the, mean, the meaning of rescue. We, even though we believe still, we are following our desires. We have our shortcomings, gaps, obstacles, weakness points. We have our turbulence, you know. The air flights, you know, have, we have turbulences. <laughs> you know, sometimes air turbulences makes you feel you will die. We have, metaphorically speaking, our own turbulences, you know, but a bat in our life. You lost your wife, you lost your husband, you lost your kid, you lost your money, you lost, you were kicked out of your, someone is against you, someone is doing a character assassination for you, someone is against you, someone accusing you of something you have, you haven't done anything of it. You are in the court now because someone brought you to the court and complete injustice and you have no evidence to defend yourself. All of these things, disasters, catastrophes in our individual, I'm talking about individuals now, okay? So we need a rescue plan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that this Ramadan, he pushes us. It's a compulse, it's a fard. <laughs> I have no option. When I get into, it's like the fuel. I need this fuel, the spiritual Ramadan. The fact, and by the way, I keep repeating always, as always we need to keep repeating. Ramadan is not just to feel with poor people and to feel hunger because the needy people. It's a very minor goal. Ramadan is stated clearly by Allah, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykum siyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Oh, who you believe, it has been prescribed upon you that Ramadan is a compulsory act of worship like it was for all previous nations. So we are talking about maybe millions, all of them. What's the reason, Ya Allah? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you might become mindful of Allah, fearful of Allah, respectful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the biggest. So hunger... And thirst is not a goal and aim. No, it's just 
a way of training us how to respect Allah when we are alone. I can eat, no one can stop me at any time. Do I respect? This is the real training course. Do I believe in his existence? Yes, no. If yes, do I respect his will? Yes, no. <laughs> if I fail the test, do I have the willingness to repent because I know he's there and he's capable and he's a full ability to punish me because I disobeyed him, but he's the most merciful? Yes. If that's so, I'm in the right track, alhamdulillah. This is the training. So, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And this is the beautiful story. Last night, let me finish with this, in the Khatira, I mentioned a very quick incident happened with me last year in Ramadan. So I want to share it with you, inshallah. And uh, I ask you after we finish, inshallah, the Khutbah Al-Jum'ah, we will pray Salat Al-Ghaib, inshallah, on uh, our dear mother, uh, Umm Usama, Falak Saima, she is the uh, mother-in-law of our brother Abu Subhi Munir al Nahas. Inshallah, she passed away outside Canada. We will pray Salat Al-Ghaib, Inshallah. Now, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. I said last Ramadan, I, make, uh, I had on my Facebook page like an online program with the title of Rayyih Qalbak. Give comfort to your hearts or relax your heart, something like that. So I used to ask the people question and they reply and I use their replies, basically I comment on this. So the question was, if you know that today or the coming hours is the last hours in your life, what are the most or is the most important thing or things you will do? <laughs> Somehow Allah sent an angel and told you, look, you have five hours, <laughs> that's it. You will pass, khalas. You are coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have just five hours. And you know for sure, for certain. What will you do? The majority of the people, I can't remember the number. Alhamdulillah, I have on my page a little bit lit, less than three millions. So there is a huge number of people. The replies, the majority of them, the only two things they mentioned, they will do it, the prayer, and fixing their relation with their parents. The only two files, the people, consensus, just prayer, my parents, prayer, my parents, prayer, my parents, prayer, my parents. Which means, it's like uh, Dr. Ibrahim now, what he said, he said, once I knew that there is no gas station and my family with me, long road, midnight, no gas station, I have kids with me, with the fear that any moment anything could happen, he said, all problems, troubles, obstacles in my life declined. Only thing I was thinking, gas station. <laughs> so by the way, we can do this test for ourselves. You can just sit alone, ask yourself, what if, and somehow you knew for sure, Allah made you aware that you will leave tonight, for example. What is the only thing or things you will do it? Maybe immediately you will return the hukuk, the rights for the people you did injustice for them. Maybe, I'm talking about the people in my age now, maybe you have controlled, seized piece of land, inheritance from your father against your sisters. And it's very well known in some Arab countries, including Jordan. It's unfortunately very common. The inheritance. When the males, they take the share of the females under the, the, the cultural idea, you are married, you have a husband, you don't need, don't make a shame, don't break you know, the custom of the tribe or the family or something like that, they take a piece of land which could cost one million and two million, three millions. And she stays in poverty and he's a multimillionaire. We have a lot of cases about this. So Ramadan comes just to give, okay, or ask yourself, I'm a, what do you say? I will return back. Because I know it's volume, I know. Because one of the, uh, you know, problems that we miss most of the time, when you speak about volum, respective brothers and sisters, when you speak about volum. Immediately, our minds, they go back to the political regime level and we forget the individual level. <laughs> Definitely, I think you share me that all Arab Muslim leaders, they are zalimeen. We don't discuss this. But sometimes, as if we give us the drugs of, yes, they are zalimeen, let's make dua against them. Okay, what about me with my mother? What about me against my married daughter, what about me against my brothers? What about me against my, maybe I'm doing zulum. If I, I own a company with 500 
you know, for example, employees. Am I giving their rights? Am I delaying their salaries, which could be $1 million a month, few five days in the bank, which means an interest plus, 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 few thousands. With the, okay, you know, you know, you know, you know situation, and then I give them. They are suffering. They are facing problems. They can't say nothing. This is dhulm. Wallahi, one da'wah from one of them could delete the whole barak in my life. But why, why are you deleting if you have the money? You have a lot. Sometimes we forget. We think in the, what they say. You see, we have the micro and the macro. Sometimes we keep talking about the macro level and we forget the micro level, which is ourselves, the individuals, the dhulm, the iftira. So let's review and remember this, inshallah, with the Mawla Azza wa Jal. اللهم ارحمنا فوق الارض وتحت الارض ويوم العرض عليك يا كريم اللهم ارحم شهداءنا في غزة يا الله واغفر لهم وتجاوز عنهم وتقبلهم يا الله وكن مع إخواننا وأخواتنا المستضعفين مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم كن معهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم كن معهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم اغفر لهم وتجاوز عنهم اللهم اخذل من خذلهم اللهم انتقم ممن طعنهم وخذلهم يا رب العالمين اللهم ارحمنا فوق الأرض وتحت الأرض ويوم العرض عليك يا كريم اللهم ارحمنا وارحم والدينا ووالد والدينا واصحاب الحقوق والواجبات علينا يا كريم اللهم انا عبيدك ابناء عبيدك ابناء امائك نواصينا بيدك ماض فينا حكمك عدل فينا قضاءك نسالك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك وانزلته في كتابك او علمته احدا من خلقك او استاثرت به في علم الغيب عندك ان تجعل القران ربيع قلوبنا وجلاء احزاننا وذهاب همومنا وغمومنا يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة. And don't forget صلاة الغائب immediately after the Jum'ah إن شاء الله. And then after the Salat.